In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A number of lessons may be gleaned from the Gospel reading. Here are a few that come to mind. First, we do not always recognize God's presence. Even when God is speaking to us or in the midst of saving us, we may not recognize that it is God who is at work here. Or secondly, Jesus comes along beside us and accompanies us in our many journeys through life. Jesus is, after all, the Good Shepherd who walks with us in times of plenty and hardship. Third, Jesus does not wait to be invited by us to be in our midst. He takes the initiative as he must. Fourth, Jesus comes beside us in the midst of our doubt, confusion, and questions. Jesus does not appear to be put off by Cleopas and the other's lack of conviction that Jesus rose from the dead. Fifth, Jesus is a teacher. He continues to teach us to live as Christians. He teaches us how to interpret the scriptures. Do you want to know what Jesus said along the road to Emmaus? Read the sermons of Peter and Paul in the book of Acts. Read the letters of the apostles. Read the letter to the Hebrews. These are Christological interpretations of the Old Testament. But today, I want to focus on what happens at the table in Emmaus. When Jesus received Cleopas and the other person's invitation to join them for the meal. Everything fell in place. When Jesus blessed and broke the bread, they saw Jesus. The veil was lifted, and that feeling that they had, that feeling that there was something familiar about this guy walking with them, was confirmed. Were not our hearts burning within us, they asked one another. It makes sense to us that Jesus is revealed at the table. Even though Luke, the Gospel writer, does not explicitly say that this is a communion meal that Jesus is hosting here, it has elements of the words of institution. Jesus takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it to them. This fourfold action, this fourfold action calls to mind what Jesus does at the Last Supper. Take, bless, break, give. Even though he was a visitor, Jesus assumed the role of the host. The faith of Cleopas and his companion is sharpened that particular moment. Doubt, confusion, questions all fall away. With their faith, they see Jesus of Nazareth, crucified and risen, sitting before them. The Holy Spirit calls to mind Jesus' teaching along the way to Emmaus as they tell the story of Jesus amongst themselves and outward after Pentecost. Another aspect of our table experience is that communal eating is a time of reflection and conversation. Often during times of reflection and conversation, as we think about and talk about the events of the day, we gain clarity and understanding of what it is that has happened. We get a fuller picture of the events that we have been a part of. And sometimes there is even that aha moment Many of us had this experience during communion. During that time of reflection before and during the liturgy, the events of the week and our role in them becomes more clear. And as we say together our confession that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and left undone, as we listen to the words of Holy Scripture and the homily, and join in the hymns and the prayers, 
the Holy Spirit is working in our hearts. When we are before the altar, we hear Christ himself say to us, I am given for you, my blood is shed for you. Through faith, we see Jesus in the bread and wine. He is present with us. He is here with us now. The question that always burns within us, what do we do now? Our experience of, with the living Christ is a life-changing event. Forgiveness from God means that we have the freedom to move forward in a new and different way. We don't have to come back to the altar with the same exact same issues every time. Our time before the altar, our time receiving the resurrected Christ, can lead us to change our lives for the better. Our time of reflection, repentance, and reception of God's grace can lead to an amendment of patterns of thinking and behavior. A few weeks ago, someone sent me the following poem. Lynn Unger wrote it as the pandemic was going into full swing here in the United States. And Lynn wonders if we can use this time of disruption to examine our lives and perhaps make some changes. I personally was struck by the news this week that the air pollution throughout the earth is diminishing. People can see the night sky, people that haven't been able to see it for a, over a decade. People are breathing better now. And one possibility for our globe as we move forward is that we make changes in our priorities and the ways in which we do things. Is it all about buying and selling? Is it all about consumption? For Christians, we can use this opportunity to examine whether or not we live as if Jesus is truly at the head of our home table. Are we living our lives according to God's priorities? Or is it the priorities of our culture that has set the tone in our lives? Here is Lynn Unger's poem, Pandemic. What if you thought of it as the Jews considered the Sabbath the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling. Give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we shall live. I do look forward to when we can, together, enter into a liturgy of holy communion. I do look forward to when we can, together, receive Jesus sacramentally. Until that time, we continue on this journey toward the altar, trusting that Jesus is with us. He is still teaching us how to love God and our neighbors. All God's people say, Amen. Amen.